Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship this morning with St. Thomas Episcopal Church in Columbus, Georgia. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter. It is May the 3rd, 2020. We're so glad that you're joining us for this time of worship. I want to say a special word of welcome to any children who may be watching with us this morning. Today is sometimes called Good Shepherd Sunday. Every year on this Sunday, we hear scriptures that remind us that God is our shepherd, that Jesus is our good shepherd, and that God wants to lead us to places that are fruitful and life-giving for us and for everybody. But in today's gospel lesson, Jesus will also remind us that there are lots of people in the world who are also shepherds, and that we are all called to shepherd and to care for one another. And so I want you to think this morning about some people who take care of you like a good shepherd taking care of a flock of sheep. Who are the people who care for you? After you hear the gospel lesson this morning, after you hear those words from Jesus, draw pictures of those people, but make them be dressed in shepherd clothes. Dress them up like shepherds to say thank you to them for being good shepherds who help take care of you. Later on, you can share that picture on our Facebook page for the church, and you can even give those pictures to those people as a way of saying thank you to them for caring for you. To all of us, I say, we do indeed rest this day in the shepherding love of God, and that love surrounds us on every side, no matter what is happening in the world around us. And so I invite you to put your feet firmly on the ground, take a couple of deep breaths, be still and quiet for just a minute, let us know that God is with us, let go of worries about the past or anxieties about the future. Let us worship God together.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hi, greetings from the Kent family. My family attended St. Thomas through 2016 until we moved to Marietta, Georgia, just north of Atlanta. We're so happy that we can participate in the virtual services and activities that St. Thomas has offered during this difficult time. I want to personally thank Reverend Grace and her leadership Erin Redden for coordinating the activities for the children, which my kids have thoroughly enjoyed, and to Rick and Marquette McKnight for offering the music that we all have enjoyed, and especially the Sunday afternoon hymn singings. This is a reading from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of Peter. It is a credit to you if being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called. Because Christ also suffered for you, leaving an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. 
When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins on his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, He goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The word life is an important word in John's gospel. It shows up over 40 times. Many of the verses are verses that are familiar to you. Every year on Christmas Eve, we hear the words from John chapter 1, In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. You know John 3.16, That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
There's John chapter 6, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. John chapter 11, I am the resurrection and the life. John chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And in John chapter 20, the gospel writer sums up everything by saying, these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. So like I said, it's an important word. And it shows up again in today's gospel lesson from John chapter 10, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. What is this abundant life that Jesus came to give us? St. Thomas folks may remember that a few weeks before we entered the season of online church, I was able to spend a couple of days with a, a significant theologian named Miroslav Volf. Volf has spent the last several years of his work focusing in on this question, what makes life worth living? And he thinks that that really is the central question of Christian theology, that that is the central question the church needs to be answering. What makes life worth living? Or in the words of today's gospel lesson, what does that abundant life that Jesus offers us look like? And Wolf uses a lot of words and writes a lot of books to try to explain this, but his vision boils down to this, that the life worth living is a life that recognizes this world is God's home and seeks to share it with everyone. His words call to mind for me uh, the image from the scriptures that we're reading today, that image of sheep safely grazing in green pastures by still waters. The abundant life, the life worth living, is life together under the shepherding care of God. It occurs to me that this abundant life that Jesus offers is not really the same thing as what we sometimes think of as the good life. The good life is about consumption, sometimes excess, sometimes extravagance. And some of those things aren't necessarily bad all the time, but at the end of the day, I think we all recognize that those are not the things that really bring meaning and purpose to life. Sometimes when we really think about it, our pursuit of that good life sometimes becomes the thief that seeks to kill and destroy, that leads us away from what really matters. So what is the abundant life? I think we get a window into it when we recognize and focus in on the things that we're missing now. I mean, this season where we're staying at home more, I find that I'm, I'm not missing some of the extravagances or comforts or earlier pleasures of my life. I'm missing things like relationships. I'm missing things like long, meaningful conversation. I'm valuing more and more things like kindness and truth and generosity. I think those things that we find ourselves missing and longing for in this season are clues to the abundant life that Jesus offers. And so how do we get to that abundant life? Well, Jesus says it's like going through a gate. It's like crossing over from one field into another. It's like going from one place to a new place, a place of shelter and safety. And I think that the people listening to Jesus would have understood what he meant. Um, this was not really a new concept to them. The proclamation of Jesus, the things that he taught, were all about living as God called us and invited us to live. And they had been hearing that message in the Law of Moses for centuries, that there was this vision of life together in community, that in a community that welcomed the stranger and provided for everyone and made sure everyone had enough, that when you did those things, people flourished, the community flourished, and life was good. Even going back earlier to Genesis, we learned in the story of Cain and Abel that we are indeed our brother's keeper. Jesus was inviting people into that life of flourishing, that life of sharing and caring for one another. That's what the abundant life looks like. Not just what's good for me, but what's good for everyone. And in all of these mixed metaphors in John's gospel, I think he was trying to get at that same basic point. Later on, Jesus will say that he is the good shepherd, the one who lays down his life for the sheep. And yes, Jesus' example of self-giving love and service is the example that we are called to follow in our care for one another. We're called to follow the example of the good shepherd. 
And the scriptures also remind us that the Lord is our shepherd, that we live in this shepherding care of God that that leads us in fruitful paths, and surely that goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. But Jesus also says that he is the gate for the sheep. And in using that image and saying that he is the gate, he invites us to recognize that there are other shepherds too. That there are other shepherds that Jesus is relying on to help lead the sheep to safety in this world. And he's inviting us to be those shepherds who seek to care for God's flock, who seek to care for one another. I think we all know that that's the only way we're going to thrive, friends. In easier times, we sometimes forget, but in times like this, we remember that we're not going to be safe unless everyone's safe. We're not going to be healthy unless everyone's healthy. We're not going to be nourished until everyone's fed. We need to be shepherds to one another. Jesus invites us to share in this shepherding work of God. So today in our worship, we're giving thanks to God for some good shepherds among us. These are just some of many. We invited folks in the congregation to write letters to people who are doing good shepherding at work in our community, to people who are shepherding and caring for all God's people around us. We've written letters to thank them for their work, and we will give thanks to God for them in our prayers today, but we can name many, many more, many people who are sharing in this shepherding work of God. And so today we give thanks for all the good shepherds among us, But we pray also that God will empower and enable us to be good shepherds to one another. Amen. And now let us confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we invite you to offer to God your gifts. Thank you first for offering to God today the gift of your presence and your attention. We invite you to offer to God the gift of your prayers in a moment, and we will give special thanks to God for the gift of shepherds in our community, good shepherds among us. We welcome the gifts of your resources. St. Thomas relies on these gifts to continue our online ministry in this way, but also to continue our shepherding work in this community Your gifts make the shepherding care of God possible through us, and so we are so grateful. And I also invite you to offer to God your willingness to be one of God's shepherds, your willingness to shepherd and care for others in whatever ways are available to you. As we hear some offering music, I invite you to offer all of these gifts. And now let us present to God the offerings and oblations of our lives and our labors. Yeah. 
And now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. And Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
And now let us pray the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>